My name is Cyrus Marcus Ware and I'm a visual artist. I do um, a lot of work in the mediums of drawing, painting and performance art, mixed media, other things like that to explore, um, I guess, my experience of disability but also activist culture and, um, you know, to, under to help me to sort of understand what's happening in the world and the way that humans, humans interact with each other. Um, my work, um, I've been making work uh, for about 20 years and uh, certainly in the last 10 years or so I've really uh, been falling in love with drawing and painting as a way to paint in very large scale uh, into reality I guess or into a public record or into an archive uh, the beautiful beautiful uh, lives of activists and of um, those on the margins who aren't always depicted in uh, the art historical canon and also just in society at large. I do uh, a lot of work that, that draw, you know, I, I draw very large scale, sometimes 12 feet, sometimes larger, um, tall uh, portraits of uh, racialized people, disabled people, trans people, um, people who don't always have a voice. And I ask them about their practice, about their lives, what they do, uh, how they got involved in organizing and movement building, what they'd like to see change in the world, what their experience of love is like, um, and, and it's a way of um, of giving a voice and of creating a platform and creating a space uh, in certainly in society, but also particularly in art history, where we're used to seeing giant portraits of maybe kings and popes, but not always of everyday people, and certainly not of, of folks on the margin. So uh, that's what my work uh, largely is about. Um, in terms of performance art, a lot of my performance art involves uh, telling moderately funny stories about my experience of disability um, and and or creating uh, I exchanges and, and opportunities for human beings who don't know each other to interact. So I've been doing um, a performance called Activist Love Letters for a couple of years that uh, has strangers writing uh, love letters to other people, other activists or other people in their community or, or across the northern part of Turtle Island. Um, as a way to try to get people to talk to each other and kind of have an exchange and figure out how to fortify and sustain each other as we move forward into, I guess, this next moment um, of social life, uh, of, you know, an environmentally different world um, and a world hopefully where we all get to be uh, in it. So that's sort of what I do as an artist. Um, certainly my, for me, uh, my practice is very much connected to my experience of disability. Um, and I guess what I would mean by that is that um, I desire disability. I love uh, my life and I love being able to talk about my life in my work. So, um, you know, telling funny stories about you know, the experience of being in, you know, psychiatric detention, which is not a very funny situation, but trying to figure out a way to talk about that, you know, with other people um, and to to find the ridiculousness, I guess, of some of the situations that I found myself in. Um, also, you know, figuring out how to center and celebrate disability as a big part of who I'm um, creating work uh, about who who I'm doing portraits of, um, who, you know who who I'm talking about in my work, and really thinking about um, centering that in a beautiful way uh, in my practice. Um, but I would also say that it's it's intimately connected to my work because it affects how I work. So for um, you know for the kind of uh, large scale work that I that I like to do, for me it's very. Um, it's very useful for me to be able to just do it in a long durational period. So, you know, a six foot by, by 12 foot portrait, you know, I would like to do ideally in about 72 hours in a durational way. So over a long period of time. And that's in, in, you know, in part because of my, the way that my brain works, I have a, a neurological condition and I, I have some trouble remembering things and it takes me a while to kind of get into the, into the focus of doing the practice. Um, and uh, so it's really, really useful for me to be able to do over a long period of time but like many of us we have lots of different experiences in our body and so I also have lupus and a couple of autoimmune um, diseases and so as a result you know my body doesn't always let me work for 72 hours even if that's what my brain would like so um, you know just figuring out how to kind of 
do the work and create work in ways that um, celebrate and honor disability, but that also celebrate and honor my own experience and my body and what my body needs, what my brain needs to be able to work and also to be able to live my life and be, you know, do things outside of my practice. You know, um, doing a 72 hour durational work can be really hard to do anything else for the rest of the week because, you know, you have a lot of recovery time with uh, autoimmune stuff when you push it too much. So, you know, figuring out that kind of push-pull and that balance is, I guess, maybe to me very interesting. Uh, how much I can push it, how much I, I, I don't want to. What does it mean to be an artist um, um, and have uh, limits? You know, because I think that in our practice and in our field, we're often expected to just keep saying yes and, and to just sort of keep putting ourselves out there, you know, either in a social context with the social expectations that come with sort of going to things and going to events or, you know, the amount of work that we produce. And, you know, as soon as you're you're done, you know, creating something large and amazing, people say, this is great. What's next? You know, so this sort of consumer um, uh sort of franticness of, of, of expecting more and more and more and more and more. What does it mean to say, actually, you know, this is how much I'm going to make now and then I'm going to take a break. So, what, you know, I'm just very interested in how when we desire disability, when we center disability in our work and in our lives, how it, that can kind of change the way that we um, maybe do this thing called being, I guess, in an art community. What, what, what could it look like? How could it look differently so that we could all get to be able to be part of it? So... That's really interesting to me, um, and yeah, I think that, that, that that's where some really interesting change could possibly ha happen, and a lot of my practice is about trying to uh, push for certain social changes, and I think that I don't just mean sort of in the larger world about, you know, sort of big sweeping changes in society or small sweep small sweeping changes in our families or in our communities. I also mean the structures and the ways that we work, the systems in which we work. And I think that there are ways that we can maybe imagine creating work, producing work, supporting people who make work that could look a little bit differently than um, it currently looks right now. I think that we're in a really exciting phase and I'm I'm sort of thrilled to be witnessing how uh, things are developing and changing as we speak. Um, uh, certainly the way that there, there's been an, an increase in funding um, to specifically support deaf and disability arts, CRIP, MAD arts, sick and disabled arts um, at, at sort of the, the local and the, the, the national level. Um, there's also, you know, we've seen the development of all of these policies through, in part, you know, um, inspired by the um, the legislation, the Access for Ontarians with Disability Act, but also as, you know, institutions are starting to sort of grapple with the idea that uh, we exist, we're here. Um, I think that what the opportunity, the you know, the opportunities that sort of present themselves at this moment is to figure out how to, um, one, make those funding opportunities truly accessible to 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 all disabled people, um, you know, including people who are on ODSP. That's a big question right now about how you can kind of be on ODSP, but then also you know, you're, there's some, you know, limitations about where you can get additional funding, like arts grants. Um, and then in terms of the institutional changes, you know, we have to really be pushing for institutions to recognize that we as deaf, disabled, crip, mad, um, artists and, and humans that we are not just coming as audience. So this is not just a potential audience to develop. We are artists, we are professionals, we, you know, we are all sorts of things. So that you can, you don't just make space in the audience for us, you make an accessible stage that we can climb up onto and be part of, you know, delivering a spectacular presentation. So just really trying to push back and say that this isn't just about audience development, this is about recognizing um, you know, the brilliance of um, crip, mad, and uh, deaf and disabled artists out there who have a lot of great work to present that would actually, you know, make your exhibitions better, make your collections better, and to figure out how to kind of, I guess, push for that um, on a larger scale. Um, and also, but again, with that with that understanding that, uh, that, you know, it may look a little bit different and the way that we work may be a little bit different in our um, the way that the, the way that time and sort of timelines will go may need to look a little bit differently, and we need to recognize that by changing some of those systems, not only will it make 
these kind of opportunities more accessible for, for deaf, uh, crip, mad, uh, sick and disabled artists, but actually they're beneficial to everybody. Everybody would benefit from some of, you know, from changing the way that we have this sort of in, immense time pressure and the immense pressure to produce, 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 produce. Very excited uh, by the panel today and by discussions like this. I think that um, you know the more that uh, larger institutions come to come to the table and really begin to examine what amazing work you know is out there, um, I think that we're going to see better better work, better exhibitions, better institutions, better communities because we're all going to be supported to be able to be. Uh, to be creating, to be uh, imagining together. Um, and I think it's particularly important in this moment. I mean, we saw some dramatic numbers over the weekend around climate change and the temperature rising. And of course, with, you know, wildfire fires and really dramatic changes in weather, we know that the world is changing. Like the world, the global experience of being alive on this planet in this moment is changing. And we need all artists. We need artists to be able to uh, be supported to uh, help us to dream and imagine something else. Um, and also to be able to to imagine love and to be ima to imagine hope uh, as we sort of move into this next phase. So I hope the rest of the panel goes really well, and thank you again.